thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about confidence levels. So this is something that I remember having a big debate about in graduate school and thinking this is an odd concept, but essentially confidence levels boil that confidence levels boil down to the percent of time that a population parameter is contained in an interval. So for example, if you have a 95% confidence interval and you had 100 intervals, 95 of them would contain the population parameter, whereas five of them would not. That's what it is. Now today I have an applet that we're gonna be using to help illustrate this point. If you're interested in, I have the applet linked in the description of the video. It's called, or it's from StatCrunch. So what we're gonna do today is set our mean, we'll set it to be 100, we'll set standard deviation to be five. We'll start with a sample size of 30, and then what we're gonna do is create intervals, uh, 100 intervals. So here you can see that our confidence level is 75, or 0.75 or 75%, and you can see that over here, the proportion that contained the population mean of 100, which is up here, uh, is, 76.5% of the time. So if I keep clicking this 100 intervals, 100 intervals, 100 intervals, 100 intervals, and I keep doing it over and over and over again, as I continue, the more it's going to align with this 75%. can keep doing it over and over and over again, but essentially that's where that 75% comes in. Now, the next thing I want you to focus on is the width of the interval. So at 75%, not that hard to contain the population mean. But if I want to be a little bit more confident, like if I go up to 80%, watch what happens to the width of the interval. You can see that the width of the confidence interval changes. It actually becomes a little bit wider. Uh, if I went up to 90%, you'll notice that the width of these confidence intervals become wider yet. If I go up to 95%, you'll see that they get wider yet. Now, why is that happening? Well, I always tell students, if you want to be more confident, you need more room. Like, if I were to give you a ball, and I was going to let you shoot into a 5-gallon bucket or a 96-gallon trash can, which one are you more confident that you'll make that shot? Probably the 96-gallon trash can. Why? Duh because it's bigger. If you want to be more confident, you need more room. That's what happens with your confidence level. If you need to be more confident, like 99%, you need more room. Yes, you contain more of the population mean. More often you contain the population mean, but you also are going to have a wider interval. So there's a trade-off there though, right? Like if you need to be precise, being more confident is gonna make you have a larger interval. And so if you're doing something like planning for how many cheese it boxes you need to have on the shelf, you kind of want a sweet spot. And most people find that sweet spot at 95% where you're, you're precise, you're containing it most of the time, and you're okay with that 5% being wrong. Whereas 99%, you're going to be right more often, but you also have a lot more room, or maybe you have to send more cheese it boxes, for example. So I also now want you to notice what happens when I change the sample size. So here it's only 30. Watch what happens to the confidence interval when I go to 50. It actually narrows, right? More people means you're more accurate. If I go from 50 to 500, now see what happens. It gets much narrower because the more people you have, the more accurate you are at estimating your population. That's like if I told you I took a sample of 50 people from the United States and tried to figure out the average income, and then I told you I took a sample of 500, which one do you think would do a better job? 500, right? And so with that, you can see it reflected in the size of that interval because it's smaller. Now, if you follow along in these videos, you might remember that the denominator for our standard error includes n which means that if you increase a denominator, ultimately that quotient or that standard error measurement is going to decrease. And so that's why you're seeing here that your interval is becoming narrower because that denominator or that sample size is getting larger. And so with that, you have a smaller or narrower interval. 
So this is a look at kind of how a confidence interval works, what a confidence level is, how a sample size affects a confidence interval's width. Hopefully that helps you to understand it a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed this series on confidence intervals. I'll see you for future videos.